Alright, thanks for watching and welcome to the second part of our linear algebra slash orthogonality extravaganza. Now that we've seen that orthogonal sets are awesome, let's explore the concept of orthogonality a little bit. And today, what we're going to do are orthogon orthogonal projections. And you'll see, not only is it this cute topic, but also the key of what we're going to do soon, or in a couple of videos. Okay, so here's, and it goes in two parts. So part one. Because first of all, let's discuss orthogonal projections on a line. So today, given a point x or a vector x and the line L, L, we want to project x on L. In the world do I mean by that? As they say, a picture says a thousand words. So suppose, again, you have some point x and a line l. We want to find some way of squishing x on that line. So for example, this or this. But if you think about it, it turns out there's one way to do it efficiently, and as I said, it's very important for later on. Namely, a very nice way of squishing x on this line is in the following way, like this. And of course, intuitively, it seems optimal, but like, what makes this projection very nice? Notice in particular, if you consider this line and this line, they're perpendicular. So, this is why this is called an orthogonal projection, because we have some sort of perpendicularity involved. And think about it. Intuitively, you thought it was optimal, but it's also perpendicular, so maybe in our minds, we are set to think in a perpendicular way. So, maybe math is ingrained in our minds. Okay, and so what is that called? So first of all, we'll call it X hat, because we like hats and it's cute. But more importantly, this is called the orthogonal projection. The orthogonal projection X hat of X on L is, okay, there are two properties that are very important and which help us find a formula. First of all, it's the point on L. On L. So it has to be on that line. And moreover, there's some perpendicularity involved. And we might say, okay, so what is that line in fact? Think about it. On the, on the one hand, you go up by x units. On the other hand, suppose you go down by minus x units. So this is minus x hat. Then, in fact, you get this line here, which is x minus x hat. And notice, if you look at vectors here, those two vectors are actually equal. They are parallel, they have the same direction, the same length, etc., etc. So in fact, this thing here, it's nothing other than x minus x hat. So what we want is that this segment here is per 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 perpendicular to the line. So x minus x hat is perpendicular to L. So we want two properties. We want that x hat is a point on L, and also that this line, x minus x hat, is perpendicular to L. And from those two properties, we'll be able to extract a very nice formula for x hat, 
which is actually similar to stuff that we've seen before. But of course, this might look like gibberish. Let's do a very concrete example. So calculate. Orthogonal projection, so the OP, so not original poster or operating room, okay, x hat of, sorry, quite well, sure, x hat of the point x, which is 1, 1, on the line L, which is just the span of 1, 2. Just the set of multiples of 1, 2. All right, so what is that? So first of all, and let me draw a similar picture to here, but it's not quite the correct picture. So we have x, which is 1, 1, and then we have our line L. Okay. And what we know is that L is just the set of multiples of 1, 2. So for example, suppose this is 1, 2. And let's call it u. So u is the vector 1, 2. And what we'd like to do, we'd like to squish the vector x on this line. So we want to calculate x hat. And I know it's not quite the right picture because this vector should be here, but we're just doing it abstractly, so it's OK. Okay, and now towards a formula for x hat. So let's sort of discover what the formula is. So as I said, we'd like two properties. On the one hand, we want x hat to be on L. x hat is on L. But remember, L is just the span of u. So, because x hat is in the span of u, x hat has to be a multiple of u. So x hat equals to a u for some a. A real number, okay? A u, you know, this is for you. <laughs> okay. That's one thing. Second of all, we want, as I said, x minus x hat to be perpendicular to L. is perpendicular to L. In particular, this vector here, x minus x hat, has to be perpendicular to u, because you know, L is just the span of u. x minus x hat is perpendicular to u. And what does it mean to be perpendicular for vectors? It just means your dot product is 0. So, what we get, x minus x hat dot u equals to 0. But then, we have something very nice. x hat is just a u. So, x minus a u, again, dot u equals to 0. And then, we can expand this out and get a formula, and get solve for a. So we have x minus a u dot u equals to 0. Expand this out. x dot u minus a u dot u equal to 0. But by the way, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find this. Because once we find a, we can find x hat. So then let's solve for a. You have a u dot u equals to x dot u, and then a becomes x dot u over u dot u. And you might say, whoa, doesn't that look familiar? In fact, it does. If you look at my previous video, that's exactly the hugging formula that we found. Remember, x is a vector, it hugs u, and then u is so happy that u hugs itself.
and you get that. Which again, I think it's what makes this chapter so nice. We get stuff that you know, we found before. So what is our conclusion? Remember what was x hat? x hat was a u, you know, a u, but a is just x dot u over u dot u. u over u dot u. And this is our formula for the orthogonal projection. Again, orthogonal projection of x on the line spanned by u. And remember, if you want, it's a, there's an easy way to remember this. First of all, x hat isn't the span of u, so it's a constant times u. How do you get that constant? You hug x with u. So it's x hug u over u hug u. This gives you a constant, and you just multiply this by the vector u. And if you want, let's calculate that out. So that becomes a 1 comma 1 dotted by 1 comma 2 divided by 1 comma 2 dotted by 1 comma 2. So always this now. Basically, u gets repeated four times. And again, this is a number, this is a vector, and you're left with 3 halves times 1, 2, and that's, if you want, sorry, 3 fifths, my bad, 3 fifths times 1, 2, and that becomes 3 fifths and 6 fifths. So in other words, if you have your vector x and you project it on u, no span of u, then x hat in this case becomes a vector 3 fifths, 6 fifths. Very good. That's the formula for orthogonal projections. But you might say, why is this so useful? Well, let's do a couple more problems for this because you'll see orthogonal projections, they're optimal in some sense. Okay, let me discuss this. So there was a part A of that question. I may have forgotten to put A. Well, now, let's do part B. Using that orthogonal projection, let's calculate the distance between x and that line. So calculate the distance So again, we have our picture here. We have x, we have l, and we have x hat. And the question is, why did I say that orthogonal projections are optimal? Well, look, among all the ways of squishing x on that line, notice that x minus x hat gives you the smallest distance. So. In other words, if you give me any other projection, the length of this segment will always be bigger than the length of this segment. So it always gives you the shortest distance. And by the way, you may not think about this, but suppose you have a fly on the wall you know, that you want to eliminate. Usually the way you eliminate it is with an orthogonal projection. So usually you have, you slap it this way. You never go like, oh, I'm going to kill the fly like this. Ooh. Because notice that the distance will be bigger, so the fly will have more time to escape. OK, so again, here's a very important fact. x minus x hat gives you the smallest distance between x and l. Okay. And you may not realize this, but this will be super important in a video I'll do soon on least squares. So useful for least squares. Because 
because in some sense, we'll see that the distance between x and the line will give us some sort of an error, and the orthogonal projection will make this error as small as we can. But again, this is for another time. Okay, so, as I said, the distance here is given by x minus the length of x minus x at, which gives you the length of 1, 1 minus 3 fifths, 6 fifths. And it's the length of 2 fifths and minus 1 fifth. And just one little thing, what does this double bar mean? Well, all it means is you take the square root of the squares, of the sum of squares of the entries. So uh, 2 fifths squared plus minus 1 fifth squared. And if you do that, you should get 1 over squared of 5. In other words, the smallest distance between x and the line is square root of 5. We call that the distance between x and the line. Okay, next application, and this will be super important for the Gram-Schmidt process, which I'll do in another video, namely, orthogonal projections not only help us find the distance between a point and the line, but they also allow us to easily construct perpendicular vectors. What do I mean by that? Let's try to find a vector perpendicular to you. So remember, we had a line that was spanned by u. Let's say this is 0 and this is x. And we projected it in an optimal way on that line. Again, notice u is this vector here. And in particular, the vector x minus x hat, it's precisely perpendicular to u, which tells us this process allows us to find easily a per vector perpendicular to u. So fact, x minus x hat is automatically perpendicular to u, and you'll see, very important for the Gram-Schmidt process. Or Gram-Schmidt. So here our answer is just x minus x hat, which you've calculated is just 2 fifths minus 1 fifth. And automatically we know that it's uh, orthogonal to the vector 1 comma 2. Orthogonal Again, very nice. And remember, orthogonal vectors are nice. So this will give us an easy way of constructing orthogonal vectors. And lastly, this is more of a physical application, but if you think of x as being a force, it turns, it may the force be with you, it turns out that in this, with this process, you can actually decompose a force easily into what's called the tangential and the normal components. So let's try x as the sum of two vectors, one in L and one perpendicular to L. So again, the picture that I drew 50,000 times. So here we have x, and then remember we have L, and we have this x hat. And here comes a little trick. So remember, x hat is in L, and this vector, x minus x hat, is perpendicular to L. And notice, it might seem silly, but x is actually written as x hat plus x minus x hat. 
this is reverse cancellation going on, but this, the fact is x hat is in L and x minus x hat is perpendicular to L. So if you want, just decompose that vector as 3 fifths and 6 fifths plus 2 fifths minus 1 fifth. And I believe that was the vector 1. And again, that's useful in physics because imagine that x is a force and you just decompose it as, I think, the tangential component and the normal component of the force. I remember I was just taught the formulas and they made no sense to me, but I think using linear algebra it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so you think I'm done, but not at all. Because, so far, I did this spiel of orthogonal projection on a line. It turns out there's nothing special about that line. You can actually do orthogonal projections on more general things, more general subspaces. And in fact, just to illustrate that, let's do an orthogonal projection on a plane. And you'll see it's not very, it's plain simple if you want. Second part, part two. Let's do this, the same thing as before, but with more general subspaces. And you'll see it's exactly the same thing, which again, I think makes linear algebra so beautiful. You can just easily generalize things. So, consider the following thing. W is the span of one, one, zero, and minus one, one, zero. And before we continue, make sure that those vectors are perpendicular. Otherwise, if you try it out with the formula, it doesn't quite work. But no need to despair because we'll do the Gram-Schmidt process next, which will help us find orthogonal vectors easily. So let this be u and v, and then let x be minus 1, 4, 3. So the first question, as before, find the orthogonal projection x hat of x on the plane w. Okay. So the point is, here we have x. Here we have our plane W that's spanned by U and V. And again, those are perpendicular. And somehow, we want to squish X on that plane. So we want to find X hat. Okay. And so what properties do we want to have? Well, very similar to before. We want X hat to be in W. And moreover, this vector here, which still is x minus x hat, well, we want it to be perpendicular to the plane. And from those requirements, we can find an easy formula. So again, definition, okay, the orthogonal projection x hat of x on w is the vector such that, first of all, x hat is in w, and moreover, again, x minus x hat is perpendicular to u, and x minus x hat is perpendicular to v. So, in, you know, in contrast to the previous example, instead of just being perpendicular to one vector, here we want that vector to be perpendicular to both u and v. Again, from this, we can find a formula. So remember, W is spanned by U and V. So because X is in W, X has to be a linear combination of U and V. So sorry, X hat is AU plus BV. And we want to find this. Just as before, 
using again, actually calculating x minus x hat, etc., etc., we actually find that A is the hugging formula x dot u over u dot u, and B, in this case, is x dot v over v dot v. Oh my god! We have the same formulas as before. So, what we get in math is x, e x hat, is again some number times u plus some number times v. And again, that's the way you have to remember it. And the number is just a hugging formula. x dot u over u dot v u plus x dot v over v dot v. It's super important. And then if you do that, you get okay, some little nightmare. But u is a 1, 1, 0. So you take your vector x, which is on you know, my paper, okay, minus 1, 4, 3, and you hug it with u, 1, 1, 0, over 1, 1, 0, dotted with 1, 1, 0. And you do the same spiel with v, which is minus 1, 0. So you get minus 1, 4, 3, and you dot it with v. Minus 1, 1, 0, dot it with minus 1, 1, 0. And then if you calculate that, you get in the end, so 3 halves times 1, 1, 0 plus 5 halves times minus 1, 1, 0, and which again is a linear combination of u and v. So that's good. And let me write the result on a new blackboard. And in the end, summa summarum is minus 1, 4, 0. Ta da! Again, just as before, we can play around with this a little bit. So let's find a distance between x and w. And again, we have our picture here. This is our plane w. This is x, and this is x hat. Just as before, x minus x hat. This thing gives you the distance, x minus x hat, which is minus 1, 4, 3, minus the vector we found here, minus 1, 4, 0. It's the distance of, interestingly, the vector 0, 0, 3. I don't think it's very significant here, but... This distance is 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 3 squared, square root of that, and you get 3. So the distance between this vector and the plane is 3, and then let's find a vector perpendicular to a u and v. Again. A nice way of generating perpendicular vectors, well, it's just x minus x hat, which is 0, 0, 3. And lastly, let's decompose x in terms of tangential and normal components. Right, x as x hat plus x minus x hat where the point is x hat is in w and this is perpendicular to w which we can write as x hat is minus 1 4 0 plus 0 0 all right and then you know this is all for today and next time we'll discuss very important applications of B and then C. So we'll first do C with the Gram-Schmidt process, and then we'll do B with least squares. 
So thank you for watching, and if you want more math extravaganza, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.